Namaste. Well, I'm finally going to give my opinions on the coronavirus because I've had enough time to both experience it and think about it. I got a mild case when I was in Sri Lanka and I only had a cough for a couple of days and it was over. No fever, no other symptoms at all. But it changed me. And from that experience, I started to research what is a virus? Where do they come from? How do they work? And I came across some very interesting information, which is that nobody knows where viruses come from. <laughs> they are found at 80,000 feet in the troposphere. That means they're not coming from the Earth. And also, the genetic variations in viruses are literally beyond anything that could be generated by um, the living creatures on Earth alone. It's literally astronomical. Okay, if you want to know what extraterrestrial life looks like, it looks like a virus. Okay, they can survive in space. They've been found in meteorites. Probably they've been found on moon rocks or if we had them, Mars rocks. But these viruses, what are they really? Basically, they're RNA or DNA wrapped in a little package that helps them get through the cell membrane. That's all they are. So my theory on viruses <laughs> is that they come from outer space. Ooh. No, it's not a theory, it's a fact. Because of the genetic variation it's so extreme, they can't come from Earth. So, well, what would you do? Think of it this way. If you were God, and the human race is getting a little uppity, you know? Human race is getting to be an annoyance. Human race has exceeded its boundaries, its limits. It's starting to harm the whole ecosystem the whole planet, what would you do? Huh? Would you come down and uh, get on network TV and make an announcement? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> God has many other ways to control things. Why not create a novel virus that infects people and changes them? I mean, just look at the changes in our world since this virus hit. Schools, all kinds of companies, even temples in India are closed. Gates are shut. Skeleton crew. No services. Huh? No business except extreme essentials like food, medicine, and so on. And this is everywhere. And don't think this lockdown thing is going to be over in three weeks or a month. It's going to go on in maybe some modified form, but it's going to go on for a long time. Eventually, pretty much everybody is going to get the coronavirus. It's just a question of when and how badly they'll be infected. So that's another thing I figured out about the virus. The people who are getting serious, heavy cases of the virus 
are the people who are serious heavy meat eaters. I mean, just look at the geographic distribution. China first became a big center. Then Europe, uh, especially Italy. Italy, France, Germany, UK. And then the United States. The United States became like the epicenter of the whole epidemic or pandemic. And that's where most of the meat eating goes on. I'm, I'm sure it's going to hit South America really hard, too. In fact, I haven't heard from any of my friends in South America for a long time. So it's probably pretty chaotic there. So if you want the minimum damage from this virus, huh, become a vegetarian. Do purifying things like vegetarian diet, wearing basma, huh? very purifying. And I'm going to do some videos in the near future about vegetarian diet and wearing basma and other things you can do, mantras and so on, for purification. I mean, as long as you're off work or working at home, or as long as you're not going to school or whatever it is you usually do that you can't do now, <laughs> you should use the time, invest this time in spiritual purification. Because this is your uh, front line of defense. Hmm? So I'm not going to go into that deeply now because I want to talk about change. This material world is impermanent, anicca. Uh, it's always unsatisfactory, dukkha. And it's not self, anicca. Uh, these are the three qualities of the material world that the Buddha taught. Anicca, dukkha, anatta. It's temporary or impermanent. It's unsatisfactory or suffering and it's not self or in other words it's not who we are if this body for example were the self we would never get sick huh we would all look like movie stars <laughs> we'd all be rich and so on but that's not the case and the reason for that is the body is not the self so we can't make the body do what we would like it to do. It has its own way of being, its own karma. Huh? Sometimes even it seems like it has its own will. Huh? Like when you have to go to the bathroom, for example, or when you have to eat, it's not up to you. And the body is also going on working, breathing, digesting food and so on while we sleep. And we're not even in the body. We're somewhere else in another world. So the body has its own life, its own being, its own way of doing things. Huh? The body is not the self. The self is not exactly consciousness, but the pure awareness behind consciousness. So if we look into this self, we find that it never changes. We are always aware. The only question is of what? And when we're aware through the bodily senses, this is called consciousness. And when we're dreaming, this is also consciousness because we're aware through the mind. But when we're in deep sleep, there is no consciousness. There is only awareness. This is self, pure awareness. But because in deep sleep we're overcome with ignorance, we don't remember our awareness. Huh? We just remember, oh, I had a good rest. I had a good sleep. I feel good now. And if we're deprived of sleep, we start to feel really bad. Uh, it doesn't take long either. 
So this awareness, this unchanging being, is the real self. And if we look into it, we find this self cannot be distinguished from any other self. They're all exactly the same. The only difference is in the objects of consciousness, such as the body, the mind, and the world around us, our situation, our karma, our suffering. So the world is going to change. Uh, that's what it does. That's what it is. That's its essence. The world is changing. It's also unsatisfactory and it's also non-self. But let's take a look at this change business. The reason we suffer, the reason there is dukkha, is because the contents of consciousness change. The objects of consciousness, just when we're getting used to them, they change, isn't it? I mean, think about it. Back when we were kids, we had this little small body and full of energy, huh? running around like crazy, playing and so on. And before that, we were an infant. And even before that, we were a fetus in the mother's womb. But what happened to those bodies? Where did they go? Huh? It's just like when you have a candle or another type of fire. And either you blow out the candle or the candle burns down, runs out of fuel. Or the fire burns up all of its wood or whatever else is its fuel. And it goes out. Well, where does it go? It doesn't really go anywhere. All that happened is the conditions changed. And the conditions for oxidation, burning, went away. And so the fire simply stopped. So the same thing happens to everything in this world. The conditions change. The conditions change, in fact, all the time. In the morning, it's cool and dark. And then the sun comes up and it gets light. It starts to get warmer. And in the midday, it's really hot. Huh? At least it is here. And then in the afternoon, gradually it cools, and then the sun sets, it gets dark again, and things change. Everything changes. The body changes. The mind changes. Huh? Just think of all the nonsense that you were into when you were a kid. Is it attractive to you now? I sure hope not. <laughs> because kids are covered by ignorance. That's just a fact. There's a wonderful explanation of this in the Yoga Vashishta by Lord Ram. He talks about youth as being the, just the, the uh, paradigm of ignorance and foolishness. These temporary passions that come and go in a few seconds. The mind is so unstable. The mind is so scatter any little thing that happens can divert your attention so this is how the world is acting now huh? the big politicians the big news organizations all are giving all kinds of nonsense disinformation misinformation and just plain old lies because they have some agenda they want to keep up prop up the stock market well, the stock market's broken anyway. <laughs> you see, this virus, all it's doing is showing where the weaknesses are. It's showing where things were already structurally unsound and where they need to be changed so that they're not so fragile. And we need to become anti-fragile, which means that we actually benefit from change. We benefit from randomness. See, the problem with the human mind, or most human minds, 
is that they're predicated on the idea that tomorrow will be pretty much the same as today. But that really doesn't apply because this world is always changing. Anicca, huh? it's not ever the same. So from one day to the next, everything can change. And we have to be prepared to deal with that. We can't let it upset us. So what does that mean? We have to be detached. So the first thing, before anything else, is that we have to let go of our attachments. That means we're ready even to die at any time. So this is the world that we live in. Huh? Anything can happen. So the, the real wise people huh, try to let go of as much of their attachments as possible, as much as feasible. I've been living here now almost two years in the same house. And I've had maybe a dozen guests in that time. Maybe. Hmm? Maybe less. So I'm pretty much already in uh, lockdown, <laughs> isolation lifestyle. Why? I don't want to unnecessarily complicate my life. I don't want to develop attachments that can change. Look at how relationships change. I mean, everybody's been through this, right? This is why I became a sannyasi. This is why I became a renunciant. This is why I live in seclusion, because you can't count on relationships. They change. Somebody who's your best buddy today can become your enemy tomorrow, literally. So you can't count on these relationships. You can't count on your body. Huh? The body at any time can get sick. The financial situation can change. The political situation can change. You can, be, you can be accepted one minute and rejected the next minute. Huh? Or your family situation can change. People die. People move away. Everything is subject to change. So the only way to be happy in this world is to accept and embrace change. See, like yesterday... I was brainstorming with the, one of our partners, one of our main volunteers on our course site. And we were talking about, well, how are we going to adjust to this change? And we came up with a wonderful, couple of wonderful business ideas, you know? And so I'm not gonna go into detail, this is not the place, uh, but, Basically, we saw how we can grow our uh, online community by a factor of 100 in the next year. And she also happens to be the co-founder of a software house. And she saw how she could grow her business by a factor of 1,000 in the next couple of years. So this is because we're not attached to the way things are. We're ready and willing to change. And we're willing to see the opportunities in change. Huh? There are a lot of stocks that are going down. But there are some that are going up. What are they? Huh? Just This is a subject you can research on your own. Because every change has two sides. Destruction and construction. So it's not that everything about the virus is destructive. Some of it is constructive. Some of it is building up things that we're going to need in the future. And that includes in our own bodies, in our own beings. So don't think of it as a negative thing and don't resist it. But accept the change, embrace the change, and move forward into the future that God has wrought. Aum Tat Sat. 
ஆம் சாக்தி ஆம்